If you dropped a penny from the top of the Empire State Building, would it have enough force to actually cause damage, like a crack in the sidewalk? Or if it landed on someone's head, could it kill them? Or even worse, what if you dropped a ballpoint pen off the top of the Empire State Building? Would that have enough force to actually kill someone, like an arrow in the head? Hmm, let's talk about that. Well, let's try it out. Here I have a penny. I'm gonna drop it above my head. Let's see what happens. Uh, I felt it, but it was only from like a meter up. All right, let's try a ballpoint pen. Got the, got it sticking out here. Same thing. Okay, I felt it. I mean, it was like, oh, what was that? You know, it's maybe a little slight sting is all, but that was only from a meter up. What if we judge from the top of the Empire State Building? E. This sounds like it's pretty dangerous then. Let's figure that out. Now, the height of the Empire State Building is about 380 meters, and it's measured above my head. So, using either conservation of energy, where potential energy equals kinetic energy, or using kinematics and solving for velocity, final velocity, you get the same relationship. You get that V equals the square root of 2 times G times H, or S if you use kinematics. Well, Typing in those numbers, let's see what we get. Typing in the numbers, I get that the velocity is 86.3 meters per second, which is about 193 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. So if I had a ballpoint pen or a penny hit me at 193 miles an hour, that's probably going to hurt. Especially since that when I dropped a penny from one meter above my head and I felt it at one meter, the velocity of that is about 4.4 meters per second, or about 9 miles per hour. So 193 miles an hour versus 9 miles an hour, that's going to be a, quite a bit different. So I'm thinking that that penny could definitely do a huge amount of damage. And if the ballpoint pen was there, oh my gosh, it could probably stick into my head. Or could it? There's something we're forgetting. There's something that has to do with real-world physics, and it has to do with something like this. Hmm, that piece of paper there is showing us something. It's showing us that there's something called drag force, the force that takes to move through a fluid, like water or air. Now, since the Empire State Building is surrounded by air, both the penny and the ballpoint pen have to travel through the air as they descend and try to hit my head. Now there's something that's going to happen with that. Now if the penny were to free fall in a vacuum, it would just fall down at mg. It would accelerate at 9.81 meters per second per second until it hit the ground. And that's bad, especially for me, standing below. But there's something that it, the penny is going to do. This, as it moves through the fluid, the air, it pushes the air molecules out of the way. And the air molecules are going to slow it down. Think about dropping a penny in water. We can definitely see that. And that fluid, at some point, is going to have the penny reach something called terminal velocity. Terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is the fastest that an object can travel through a fluid. And it happens because of friction. Essentially, that the fluid is going to push back with a certain amount of force that equals the weight of the object falling. So, I'm going to draw an upward arrow here and call that the drag force. And both the ballpoint pen and the penny experience a drag force that is equal to the weight. So, you can think of the, both the penny and the ballpoint pen are going to fall uh, with a certain speed, and they're going to reach a, something called terminal velocity. So if you were to draw the velocity versus time graph as time went on, or speed versus time, in a penny in free fall, in a vacuum, it would start with zero velocity, and its velocity would increase at a constant rate as time went on. It has constant acceleration of 9.81 meters per second per second. The slope of this graph would be 9.81. But a penny or a ballpoint pen or any object that's falling through a fluid, like air, is going to have a slightly different graph. Its velocity versus time graph looks something like this. It still starts off at rest, so it has zero. 
and it's going to accelerate, but it's going to accelerate a lot slower. Uh, and then, at some speed, the weight of the object and the drag force will equal out, and it will no longer accelerate. So its graph will look something like this, where it will level out and reach some new speed, and it will reach that speed and stay at that speed forever until something else acts on it. So if I were to draw that graph on, that, uh, on this graph above, instead of being at 86 0.3 meters per second, once it gets to that destination, it might actually be a lot less down here. So what is that value? Well, to figure that out, we're going to have to write an F force equation. Okay, so if I look at a free body diagram of the penny, kind of redraw it again, here's the penny, we have mg pointing down, and the drag force, which I actually wrote the equation for the drag force view, it's one half rho, the density of the fluid, times the area of the penny, times the velocity of the penny squared, times the drag force of the penny, which is a constant, which you can look up. So I set these two equations equal to each other, mg and this, because we reach two in a velocity, acceleration is zero. F net equals ma, a is zero. So these have to equal each other. So essentially, mg equals all this mess. Solve for v, rearrange it, solve for v, and we get this equation here. v is going to equal the square root of mg over rho times a times c. Now I looked up the values for a penny. The mass of a penny is 2.5 grams, I converted to kilograms. Acceleration of gravity, 9.81 meters per second per second. Density of air, it ranges, but it's about one kilogram per cubic meter. Air, surface area of a penny, very, very small, pennies are small, 0 0.0003 meters squared, and that's a rounded number. And then the J coefficient you can look up, uh, it's, it's a value for a penny. Uh, for a cylinder, it's about 1.05. So plug in all those numbers in to this equation, solve for velocity. Instead of it, actually going 86 meters per second, it actually reaches a maximum speed of 12.47 meters per second, which is only about 28 miles an hour. So that's only like three times faster than what it was when I dropped it from above my head. But the thing is, that's not even it. This is the absolute fastest that it could fall, assuming the penny had a perfect straight line path. But if you ever jot the penny, or even a ballpoint pen for that matter, speaking of which, I did the same thing with a ballpoint pen, and it's about 32 miles an hour, so a little bit faster because it weighs a little bit more, a little more aerodynamic, but not much faster. So even if you took a penny and a ballpoint pen, if you tried dropping them, you notice that it's almost impossible to get them to drop straight down. They topple and turn. You can obviously see that much more with a piece of paper. Notice how it kind of weaves in and out? So because it's doing that, it's actually going to increase that drag coefficient quite a bit more, and it's going to slow it down even more. So this would be the absolute fastest that it would hit me, is 28 miles per hour. More likely it's going to be closer to like 20 or 15. So basically twice as fast as what it was when I hit my head, and this didn't hurt at all. Even if I threw it against my head, it wouldn't hurt. So odds are, if you stay underneath the Empire State Building and someone just a penny, it would be like, oh, what was that? And you would just keep walking on your merry lane. Pick up a penny off the gown, and you have good luck for the rest of the day. And thanks for watching.